Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for another video which is going to be super exciting because I am officially announcing my book club and documentary club. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you all of the books that I plan on reading and the documentaries that I plan on watching ahead of time so that you can prepare for my reviews. I intend for my reviews to be much more in-depth, including spoilers, and start a discussion about whatever media it is that we're consuming. So I got a really great tip that I should let y'all know ahead of time what it is that I'm going to be reading and watching so that you can prepare to watch or read whatever it is um, so that when the time comes that I do post a review, you're not like, oh, okay, well, I didn't read or watch that. I didn't have any time, so this doesn't really interest me. I'm going to start with my books and I'm going to go through and give you a very brief plot summary and why I was attracted to the book. Um, but I wanted to say that this basically started because while I was in Alaska um, on a family vacation, I decided to pick up a book about an Alaskan native woman. And so if you didn't know, I'm actually indigenous. Some people say American Indian, some people say Native American. I personally prefer the term indigenous. So I am indigenous, I'm a California Indian. And I realized that I have never read a novel about native people written by a native author. And it got me really excited when I was reading this um, Alaska Native woman's memoir because I stumbled upon a fictitious story within the book and that got me going. And so I've already read two books by native authors and I have five in my possession right now that I'm planning on reading. So that is going to be a big theme in some of my uh, reviews, just to keep you in mind. But the other books that I picked up, I wanted to continue with my theme of marginalized voices in novels and fiction, because I definitely feel that for my entire academic uh, experience in high school, I was very much deprived of reading perspective from marginalized people. And what I mean by marginalized is like um, authors of color, disabled writers, queer writers, indigenous writers, um, black writers, Latinx, Chicanx, Central American, um, and the list goes on and on and on. And I realized that if I want to really enjoy it, um, enjoy the book, and also kind of bring something different to the table with my content. I really want to focus all of my reading to be from the marginalized voices perspective um, because I think it's just far more interesting and I'm really tired of reading about the same upper class, wealthy, middle class, white, able-bodied, cis man experience to be honest with you. So. I think this will be really exciting. So this book club is gonna be a little bit different, I think, than some of the ones that I've seen before. Let's jump into the books first and then the documentaries last. First book that we have is the first book that I finished this summer and is basically the reason why I've started this series. And um, I'm just gonna give you a little tidbit about this and let you know that this will probably be one of my first reviews because I've already finished this book. So it will be pretty fast that I'll be reviewing this. So this is called The Tao of Raven, an Alaska Native Memoir by Ernestine Hayes. This book does say that it is a memoir, so you're going to see that it is a lot about specifically a Klingit woman's experience of going to college um, much later in her life. And then what I was really surprised at um, is she actually interweaves a fictitious story in uh, her memoir, so it kind of goes in and out of um, her recounting her real life and her personal story, and then a fictitious story about um, some Alaskan Native characters, adults, um, of a father who's struggling with alcohol addiction, and his own father, as well as like uh, the person that he conceived his child with. So it's honestly a really great book. And I've never really read the perspective of an Alaskan native person before. So I was really 
excited about this and that is basically the plot of this and the gist of this book. This is the second book that I have finished and I have to say this is probably one of the best books that I've read in a really long time <laughs> and um, so this will be also a very uh, soon to be reviewed book because I've already finished it and it is called There There by Tommy Orange and um, to give you basically um, the plot is that it is 12 different characters um, who are all um, indigenous, specifically Cheyenne Arapaho, and they all end up at the same powwow in Oakland, California. And what's really awesome about this book is that the author said that he really wanted to depict the plight of the urban native story. And if you don't know what urban native means, it means that an indigenous person who grew up in a major metropolitan city or the suburbs away from their reservation or traditional homelands. So um, like a Cheyenne Arapaho person who grew up in Oakland, though that their traditional territory is in the Midwest. Um, and I think... It really stayed true to that. And what's really awesome is to just give you some information. It's a very youthful book. Like a lot of the characters are very young. Um, of course they do range in age wise, but I do think that this particularly panders to young adults. So I'm really excited to review this book. Like I think this is gonna be my favorite review to do so far. The next book is my current read that I'm actually going through right now, so I'm not finished, but this will probably be my, I'm gonna go in order of the way that I'm gonna read them, but this will probably be my third book review that I'll be doing. And this is called The Round House by Louise Eldrick. And I've never read any of her novels, but I've heard a lot of really good things when I was searching for more native novels. So because I haven't finished the book, I can't really give you like the entirety of what's gonna happen. Not that I want to give you the entirety, I'll just give you a, a tidbit, but there's probably stuff that I'm missing out. So this, um, this writer, also about the last writer, they were also Cheyenne Arapaho, just to mention that. This writer I believe is Ojibwe and um, the story place takes place in the 1980s and it is about um, a, an Ojibwe woman living on the reservation who is violently attacked and this is from the perspective of her son and um, her husband's a tribal lawyer. And the entire book is from the perspective of Joe, I believe, and it is basically a journey into how he can reconcile and grieve and go through the process of dealing with the fact that his mother was violently attacked. The reason I was really attracted to this book is because um, there is a well-known issue of missing and murdered indigenous women in the indigenous community and it's extremely tragic, sad, and difficult for our communities to deal with and so the fact that this book explores something so complicated and even though um i believe she doesn't go missing in this book um it is like an attempted murder and um there is a sexual assault aspect and so i think the fact that they're tackling a very real and huge issue in all of our indigenous communities through fiction is really powerful so i'm very excited to get into this and so far i'm very much enjoying it this is a book that i picked up today and i have not read any of it it will be my fourth read on my list and so i'm just going to kind of give you the gist of what i've read on the back but this is called trail of lightning and it is by rebecca roanhorse I believe that this is like a science fiction book and it kind of talks about um, the uh, Diné or Navajo reservation and it's like post-apocalyptic and um, I believe the main character is a monster hunter and she's tasked with finding a missing girl um, and she basically has a sidekick and this is like a very long journey of them um, going through you know a post-apocalyptic world and that is super cool to think about indigenous futurism so i'm really excited i've never read an indigenous futurist book 
or watched or consumed any media related to that, so this will be my first. My next book, just to give you a break <laughs> from all of the native novelists, which who needs a break from that? Um, I'm going to be doing uh, this as my next read, and it is called Aisha at Last, um, and it is by Uzma Jalaluddin. So I looked up how to pronounce Uzma's name, and I hope that I'm doing it justice. If I'm not, please feel free to correct me um, in the comments down below. But I read the back of this, and it is a story about um, a character named Aisha who has a dreams of being a poet, and uh, basically she's navigating her experience of one of her family members going through an arranged marriage and um, she doesn't want an arranged marriage but then she uh, falls in love or like happens upon um, a man who she's very fancy of and she ends up getting um, uh, stuck in a situation of an arranged marriage with him and so it's kind of her dealing with the complexities of like learning more about him and navigating that. So this seems really awesome and I have never read a book or sorry, I've never read a novel, um, a fictitious story about um, a Muslim woman. So I'm really excited to, you know, support and get this uh, much deeper insight into this story. Continuing on with the books, the next book that I have is called In at the Deep End by Kate Davies. And um, I just bought this book along with Aisha at Last and Trail of Lightning just today. So this is very new to me and I just found it in the bookstore. But I was really excited when I read the inside of the cover. And this is a story about, I believe it's from the perspective of a white woman because the author is a white woman, but it doesn't say of course, but it is the experience of a woman who discovers that she is lesbian and is attracted to women. And what I was really excited about is that it did mention um, BDSM clubs and exploring polyamory. So I thought that was really cool. I've taken a sexuality theories class, but I have never read a novel from the perspective of an LGBTQ plus person and never read a fictitious story about somebody who's in the BDSM scene or even exploring it um, in a, you know, fictitious way. So this is going to be really cool and I'm really excited for this. And then hopping back into the native novelists, I am going to be reading La Rose by Louise Eldrick, which is the author of The Roundhouse. So I already gave you um, about the author. She is Ojibwe. And it seems that this story is about um, an Ojibwe person or man who is struggling with addiction. Um, I, I believe it's alcohol addiction, I'm not sure. Um, but he goes into recovery and he seeks his traditional ways as a means to um, heal, begin the healing process of his addiction. And he struggles with suicide. He, you know, um, like is reconnecting with his family and it seems like it's going to be a really, really good book. So I'm super excited about that. The reason I'm really, uh, I forgot to mention, uh, and the reason I'm really excited about reading La Rose, that book that I just talked about, is because I have a lot of videos on my channel where I talk about how I manage um, recovery and sobriety. So it will be really awesome to read another indigenous per person's perspective about the process of recovery and being a sober native person. So now I'm going to briefly, I'm not going to get into it very deeply or anything, I'm going to tell you the three documentaries that I have on my list for this upcoming month um, that I'm going to be watching. So the first one that I have, and by the way, these are all on Netflix, so you can watch them on Netflix. The first one that I have is called Karl Marx City. Um, I have no idea what this is gonna be about, <laughs> really. Um, I've just kind of read one-liners about it, and it's just a review, and it doesn't tell anything about the plot, but it sounds really good, and I hope that it's about Marxism, because I love reading, talking, and learning about Marxism and anti-capitalism. The next uh, documentary that I'm going to be watching is called Under the Sun, and uh, the review says that it has something to do about... To uh, 
The review says that it has something to do about totalitarianism and citizens, so I'm not really sure like much more than that, but it sounds really exciting, so that will be my next watch. Finally, the last documentary that I have on my list is called My Beautiful Broken Brain. And what I really liked about the review for this is that it said that it is kind of a personal point of view um, in the documentary, which I'm really interested to see how they explore that. Yeah, I don't really know much more about it other than like POV and cinema's capabilities. I don't even know what this review is talking about, but I kind of like diving into documentaries not knowing anything about them because it's, I, I feel like I always happen upon the best documentaries when I just kind of have very little information about them. All right, everyone, that is all of my announcements about book club and documentary club. I hope that this is an effective method for us to continue to, you know, uh, for me to review in a proper way where you can keep up with me and know my schedule. So um, I'm really excited. I think this is going to be an even more fun extension of my vinyl reviews since that is something that I've been doing regularly. I wanted to add some more reviews because I don't just listen to music. There are so many things that I like to consume media wise. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm talking so fast. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up comment down below telling me what book or what documentary you are most excited about and if you have read it but don't no spoilers okay no no no, no spoilers we save that for the individual video okay and make sure to subscribe so you can keep up and know when i'm going to be posting my next review thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye